Hello and welcome again. In the previous video we were talking about the comparison between the square multiply algorithm and the right to left a binary modal exponentiation. These are two algorithms to do exactly the same thing, uh, compute modular exponentiation. And in the last video I compared them in the way that I just set the base, uh, the exponent and the modules as big large integers and then run the algorithms uh, 200 times and compare the times in my Java uh, implementation. So in this approach, what I'm going to do is uh, very quickly, I'm going to tell you what I did for the second time I actually compared these two algorithms. So we're going to run the algorithms with randomly generated big integer types. And these are the big integer of Java. And basically what we're going to do is generate randomly a base, exponent, and a modulus and run both algorithms and see what which one is faster in which instance. So, so that's the first thing. We're going to generate randomly base, exponent, and modulus. Now we run the square multiply algorithm with this number generated in one. Then right after that, I'm going to run the right to left algorithm. Again, with the same numbers we got here in one. And the last thing is I'm going to compare the results. Now, I did this again with the implementation of Java that I use for these two algorithms. So these are my implementation and it's my machine. Again, if you do it in another machine, maybe the times are going to be different. So I'm just going to give you the results here. So the square multiply algorithm is 57.4074% 50 of the time using randomly generated numbers and the right to left algorithm is faster 42.592% of the time. Now, this gives us the same results as I did last time, just fixing the base, uh, the exponent and the modulus. So what I'm going to say here is it appears that the square multiply algorithm is faster than the right to left algorithm. Now, this comes a little of surprise to me because if you look at this right to left algorithm, it doesn't call for the representation, or at least it doesn't have to compute the binary representation of the exponent. While this one, it does. Now, this might happen for many reasons. Maybe because I'm using the binary representation that is coming from the square multiply algorithm from Java. Maybe that is faster than doing what I'm doing here. Now, there are many reasons. Uh, of course, what I'm doing here is not a complete comparison of the algorithms. It's just, just scratching only the surface here. So, again, this comparison seems like the square multiply algorithm is faster. Uh, this is, again, using my Java implementation, my machine, and my approach. So, keep in mind uh, that this result is under these assumptions. Now, let's actually count the number of operations of this square multiply algorithm. So let's compare how many operations do we do in average. And then that's going to, of course, depend on the exponent, on the binary representation of the exponent. So let's see. So let's recall this. So in the square multiply algorithm, what we have is we have the binary representation of the exponent, which I'm going to write down with this notation, h0, h1, ht, and base 2. The exponent has bit length t plus 1. If you count the number of bits that are here, this is t plus 1 bits. Now, the one with the square multiply algorithm, what it does is it is squares and it is squares and multiplies. Now, the number of squares is always t because it doesn't matter what it is, it is a 0 or a 1, it always squares. If it is a 1, it is squares and multiplies, or it always is squares, no matter what. So there are t squares here. The number of multiplication will cause depend on the number of ones that we have because remember whenever you have a one and the square multiply algorithm what you do is you square and then multiply so the number of multiplications will be the number of ones in the binary representation of the exponent so that's how we're going to count the number of operations here so by operation i mean squares number of squares plus the number of multiplication and we're going to make an assumption here. The assumption is that the exponents that we use in cryptography have good random properties. So in the sense that uh, the number of bits are equally distributed in the sense that we have half of the bits are approximately ones in the exponent. 
Now, that doesn't mean that it's always the case, but in average, it will always be the case here. So if we're gonna count the number of operations, so the number of squarings that we have is always t, because remember, it doesn't matter if you have a zero or one, you're always gonna square. And the number of multiplication will, of course, because we are assuming that we have the binary representation of the exponent has, uh, in average, uh, half of the ones. So we have t halves of those ones, so we have t halves of those multiplications in average, of course. So, so if the exponent has length t plus one, which is, of course, what we just saw earlier, so in average, the number of operations is t, so that means this number here, t plus t halves, which is, of course, if you do the operation, is gonna give you 1.5t. So basically, that's the conclusion here. The conclusion here is that the number of operations that you have to perform for the square multiply algorithm will depend on the length of the binary representation of the exponent and if the length is t plus 1 the number in average of operations is 1.5 t so let's see an example and see how this works so how many operations are required so let's see, look at this example how many operations are required on average using the square multiply algorithm for an exponentiation with 512 bit exponent so this is the length of the exponent in bits. So we just have to just really apply this formula right here is 1.5t. So it requires an average 1.t operations where t plus one is the, the length of that exponent in, in binary. So it's t plus one would be 512, but that means that t itself is 511. So if I do this, it's 1.5 times 511 and if you actually do this multiplication, it gives you 766.5 operations. Of course, you don't have half an operation. So we just round it up and say that is 767 operation on average. Now, that's not bad uh, because 512 bit exponent is not small, but it's, uh, it's not, I mean, it is not a small, but it's not that big. But still, if you actually do only multiplications, if we use a straightforward multiplication, you mean x times x times x with this exponent, you will actually require a lot of multiplication. It's right here, 10 to the 150 multiplications. That is quite a large number of operations. Now, if that's the case, if you just go with the multiplication, I don't think it's going to be very likely that your computer will be able to calculate that. Uh, look at the uh, magnitude of the numbers here. This is quite as small than this one. This is a 1 150 zeros after it. So this is quite a big large number compared to that one. So it's much better to do square multiply algorithm which is requires only this many operations with a 512 bit exponent than this many multiplications. So, um, so that's all uh, about the number of a, a operations in the square multiply algorithm. Now, before I finish this uh, segment of uh, modular exponentiation, I just have to mention that Java has its own implementation of the modular exponentiation. Now, it's always a good idea when you have an algorithm to implement it yourself in whatever language because it's going to teach you something. It's going to teach you how it works. Even though the language will have that implementation, it's always a good idea that you go ahead and do it on your own because that's how you learn how these things work. But uh, usually if the language has that implementation, if you're gonna use it later, it's usually better to use the implementation of the language because they probably have very fine tuning things there that you maybe didn't think about in the implementation. So in Java, Java has an implementation of modular exponentiation with big integer types, of course, because we have to do this modular exponentiation for big integers. As I mentioned earlier, you, if you don't know what this is, you want to go back and watch that uh, videos about big integer uh, in Java. So the way it works is like this. So the, the syntax here is going to be mod POW. This P is a capital P. And in here, so you're going to put the base. So it's going to be big integer type that mod pod power. And then the first number that goes here inside this parenthesis, so these are the uh, inputs of this 
function of these methods is going to the first one is going to be an exponent so it's going to be a, a big integer type and the second one is going to be the modulus so once you do this you write down this it's going to just compute uh, this using the square and multiply algorithm so the way that this uh, is implemented in java is using the square and multiply algorithm that's the algorithm that is being implemented in this case so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, Eclipse and I'm going to show you briefly how this works. Now this is not going to require too much time to tell you how it works. It's basically just write down what this is. And so I'm going to show you what uh, how this works in the Java language. So I'm here in the Eclipse application and I'm going to show you how the mod power, power exponentiation of Java works. So to do that, of course, you have to import the Java uh, Mat Big Integer uh, package here. So you can use the Big Integer. So the first thing I'm gonna do, this is gonna be very simple. So I'm gonna just define, I'm gonna define three Big Integer uh, variables, and I'm gonna show you how that works, how the modular exponentiation is gonna work here. So the first thing is, of course, I'm gonna have to define my variables. So I'm just gonna type uh, Big Integer. And the name of my variables, uh, whatever you want to name it. So I'm just gonna name it base uh, exponent, and of course uh, the modulo. So that's it. So, so I have the three variables there. So now I have to give them values. If you're gonna read them from the uh, console, then that's also fine. This means you're gonna give values here. So I'm gonna say my base is gonna be equal to new and it's going to be a big integer object and remember the way you do it is uh, of course you say that big integer and inside the parentheses there i'm just going to put my big integer between quotation marks it's a string of characters there so whatever number uh, it doesn't have to be uh, big or small just whatever number that let's make it a little bit bigger so let's see, something like that. All right, so then I'm also gonna write down what the exponent is. I'm just gonna write down exponent, copy and paste, just to save a little bit of time here. And so exponent there, and then I'm gonna change my number here, uh, whatever number comes to your mind there, doesn't matter. So let me erase those couple of things that I have there. And uh, of course I have to have the, you know, the modulus here. So I'm gonna define my modulus. So the modulus will be um, here, whatever this number might be. So let's look at the modulus here. So let's do the modulus, oh, let's put a one, two there. It doesn't really matter. Now, um, I can just type um, whatever the the operation is but I have to see it so I'm gonna have to, I have to print it out so system that out that print line yeah, I forgot to put the dot there so print line here and over there I'm just gonna type the operation now remember the first thing you do is you put the whatever the base is which in this case is called base that is mod power so it's going to be mod power as you can see there it gives me the option of mod power there the exponent is exponent and the modulus is of course this variable here called modulus i'm just going to put it there and, and that's it that's all you have to write down so basically the first three lines that you see there or the first four lines is defining your variables and i have to print it out system that out that print line i'm just gonna say base this is basically all the operation there the one that i'm highlighting base that modulo the exponent and then the modulus so if i run it then it should give me the answer and it's just that simple so that's it so this is the the modular exponentiation and remember the way this is uh, uh implemented in java is using this square and multiply algorithm so that's all I have to say about that now. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about a little bit of ways to speed up uh, the RSA algorithm. So we know how to do fast modular exponentiation, but there are a couple of things we can still do 
to make it a little bit faster. So I'm gonna stop the video now and I'll see you in the next video when this new technique of uh, making or speeding up the RSA. So I'll see you in the next video.